Hello and welcome to a new video on the Crypto2 YouTube channel. In this video, I want to give you an introduction to the basics of cryptology. I structured this video into several sections. In the first section, we want to talk about what is cryptology. And in the second section, we want to talk about the basic terms of cryptography. And as you can see here, the third part is uh, written in gray color. And this is because the uh, uh, third part will be covered in the next video. So what is cryptology? Cryptology consists of two parts. The first part is cryptography, which is the art of making ciphers. And then we have cryptanalysis, which is art of breaking ciphers. And here on the right side, you see a tree where I try to further divide parts of cryptology. On the left side, you see the cryptography. On the right side, you see the cryptanalysis. And the cryptography can be split into classical and modern cryptography. And same can be done with uh, the cryptanalysis, which also can be separated into classical cryptanalysis, which was mostly done by hand or maybe with some early machines. And of course, we have the modern cryptanalysis, which is done with modern computing techniques. Then on the left side, the classical cryptography can be split into substitution and transposition ciphers. And the modern cryptography, or at least the ciphers that we have with modern cryptography, can be split into symmetric and asymmetric ciphers. In this video, we want to have a look at cryptology, cryptography, classical cryptography, and the substitution and transposition. Here are the first basic terms that you will find in every book about cryptology or cryptography when we speak about cryptography. The first thing is a cipher. And a cipher is an encryption method or algorithm. In many books and papers, you also find cipher for ciphertext, but we define cipher only as an encryption method or algorithm. Then we have, of course, a plain text. And the plain text is a non-encrypted text that we want to encrypt. Then we have the ciphertext, which is the result of applying a cipher on a plain text. And the ciphertext, of course, is encrypted. Then we have the key. And the key is some kind of secret information that is used for encryption and, of course, which is needed for decryption. And the key is the only thing that we keep secret. We don't keep the cipher secret and we don't keep how the cipher works secret. So crypto algorithm or method has to be secure by an attacker knowing the complete cipher itself but not having the key. Then we have the alphabet. And the alphabet can be split into a plain text alphabet and ciphertext alphabet. And an alphabet is an ordered set of letters or symbols which are used for encryption or decryption. Here I try to show how all these words are connected. So as you can see here on the left, the plain text goes into the cipher. Also, the key goes into the cipher. The cipher then performs a method or an algorithm on the plain text with the help of the key, and the result of the cipher then is the cipher text. Here is a short example for a real world cipher. In this case, the Caesar cipher. On the left side, you see here the plain text alphabet that is used with Caesar. It's a Latin alphabet from A to Z. Then we have a plain text message here, which is hello world. In the middle, we have the Caesar cipher that we use for encryption which also needs a key. In the case of the Caesar cipher, it's a shift key and its value is 13. If you're further interested in the Caesar cipher, I already made a video about this, so you may have a look at this. And here on the right side, we now see the ciphertext alphabet, which is shifted by 13, so it doesn't start at A, it starts at N, and it doesn't end with Z, it ends with an M. So the A is encrypted to N, the B is encrypted to O, and so on and so on, and the Z is encrypted to M. And the result, of course, of the Caesar cipher is the cipher text here, which is U R Y Y B J B E Y Q. There are three types of classical ciphers, two main types and an additional one. The first main type is the substitution ciphers type. And substitution ciphers replace letters by other letters or, for example, symbols. 
An example for a substitution cipher is a Caesar cipher or the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher or the Visionaire cipher. We already had videos on all these three, so you may have a look at the classical cipher series on this channel. Then we have the second type of ciphers, which are the transposition ciphers. These change the order of the plaintext letters, but the plaintext alphabet is the same as the ciphertext alphabet then, only the position is changed. Examples for this are the Sitteli cipher or the columnar transposition cipher. We also had videos on these. And the third type of ciphers are the composed ciphers. And the composed ciphers are ciphers that are a combination of, for instance, different substitution ciphers or different transposition ciphers, or also a combination of substitution and transposition ciphers. Examples for this are the ADF GVX cipher, we already had a video about this, and the Granite cipher, which was used in the Cold War in Germany. Then there are other important words that we have with cryptography. For instance, the key space. The key space is a set of all possible keys of a cipher. For instance, with the Caesar cipher, I have an example here, the key space are all numbers from 0 to 25. These are all possible shift values for the Caesar cipher and the identity, that is the shift key equal to 0, is also included in the key space. The key space size, of course, then, is the size of the set of all possible keys of a cipher. And usually, cryptanalysts or cryptographs give these as a rounded up power of 2. In the case of the Caesar cipher, the key space size, of course, is 26 because we have 26 numbers here, and this is about 2 to the power of 5. With substitution ciphers, we also have some additional basic terms. First of all, we have monoalphabetic substitution ciphers. A monoalphabetic substitution cipher only has one ciphertext alphabet. An example for this is the Caesar cipher or the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. Then we have the polyalphabetic substitution ciphers. And these ciphers, the alphabet is changed during the encryption. An example for this is the Visionaire cipher or the Enigma machine. With the Visionaire cipher and the Enigma machine, we also had videos on this channel, so you may have a look at these. Then we have the homophonic substitution ciphers. And with a homophonic substitution, a letter is encrypted by more than one letter or symbol. So A is, for instance, encrypted with 0, 1 and 0, 5. And B is encrypted with 0, 9 and 0, 7, and so on. Examples for this are the Zodiac Killer ciphers, we also had a video on this, or historic ciphers that were used in the Vatican. Then we have polyphonic substitution ciphers, and with these ciphers, different plaintext letters are encrypted by the same ciphertext letter. And this makes this kind of cipher problematic because they are non-deterministic, and the decryption is ambiguous. And the problem is, when you encrypt an A with an X and a, and a B, you also encrypt with an X, then when you have the X in the ciphertext you want to decrypt, you don't know, was it an A or was it in B? So you need the context of the letter. For instance, you know uh, three letters before and three letters after this, and then you know, okay, this can only be an A. And examples for this are historic ciphers that were also used in the Vatican. So we have examples for polyphonic substitution ciphers, and they are really hard and difficult for cryptanalysis. Then we have other basic terms for cryptography. For instance, we have monographic ciphers. And with a monographic cipher, one letter is encrypted at the same time. An example for this is the Caesar cipher, where you first encrypt the first letter, then you encrypt the second letter, and so on. Then we have bigraphic ciphers. And with bigraphic ciphers, letter pairs are encrypted at the same time. So you encrypt the first two letters, then the second two letters, then the th third two letters, and so on. An example for this is a Playfair cipher, where we also had a video on this channel. Then we have monopartite ciphers. And with a monopartite cipher, the replacement of a letter or maybe more letters is a single letter. Also, the Caesar cipher is an example for this. We replace a single letter with another single letter. And then we have the bipartite cipher. And with the bipartite cipher, we replace a letter, for instance, with two letters. 
An example for this is the ADF GVX, where we first, in, or in the first step, where we encrypt a letter, for instance, an A with an DD or a B with an AX and so on. So we replace one letter by two letters. So the graphic here also refers to the um, plain text, so what we do with the plain text, and the partite here also always refers to what we do in the ciphertext. And an example is, for instance, the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher, or short simple mask, which is a monoalphabetic, monographic, monopartite substitution cipher. So this was everything that I wanted to um, discuss with um, terminology. So now we will have a look in uh, Crypto2 at uh, substitution ciphers, then we will have a look at transposition ciphers, and finally we will have a short look at composed ciphers. I'm here now in Crypto2, and I want to first show you some examples for substitution ciphers or classical substitution ciphers. And you find the substitution ciphers by going to cryptography and classical. And here we have substitution and transposition ciphers. And the first example for a simple substitution cipher is the Caesar cipher. Just double click it and then it opens a workspace. Make some more space. And in Crypto2 we have examples for all kinds of ciphers. And here is a Caesar cipher. And to execute it in Crypto2 you just click the play button. And what do we see here? We have a shift of 10. So as I already said, the Caesar cipher shifts um, the alphabet, the plain text alphabet. And you can specify here the alphabet that should be used. And for instance, the T is substituted by D, the H by R, and so on. And as always in Crypto2, you can type and it will live encrypt what you are doing. Hello, this is the test of the Caesar cipher. And the Caesar cipher is now set to ignore um, the... Um, no, it's not set to ignore. It should contain the source case. So if you write lowercase and uppercase, it will encrypt also in lowercase and uppercase. So let's have a look at another substitution cipher. For instance, we could have a look at the Visionaire cipher here. So we just double click the Visionaire cipher. And we will write a text. Hello, this is the text of the Visionaire cipher. We already had videos about this, so I don't describe in detail how these ciphers work. So if you're interested in this, you should have, you should have a look at the other videos. And of course, we have to click play. And then we see here the Visionaire cipher encryption and the decryption. Now let's have a look at an example um, transposition cipher. For this I go to the columnar transposition. So we have here the transposition cipher. Double click. And then we write hello. This is a test. Transposition cipher, and you also click on play. You can specify the key here, the plain text here. Here you see how the transposition cipher actually works. We also made a video about this, so you could have a look at this video. And here we have the decryption of the transposition cipher. Here we have the cipher text, and here we have the decrypted cipher text. So let's have a final look at a composed cipher. For that we have the ADFGVX. And we just open this here. And we have our plain text here. This is the test of the ADFGVX cipher. We also had a video about the ADFGVX. So for details, please have a look at this video. And the ADFGVX cipher, as I said, is a composed cipher, so it needs a substitution password. This is substitution and the transposition password, or key, or password, this position. And we copy this also to the second component, ADFGVX component. 
because this decrypts. We have here encryption and decryption. And let's test it. So it first uses a substitution to substitute the text, then it transposes the text, and then we have here the ciphertext, which only consists of ADF GVX, and of course the decryption here. This is a test of the ADF GVX cipher. So in this video, I showed you the basic terminology of cryptography. And the cryptanalysis part will be in the next video. There I will show you different attacks on the ciphers and the terminology of cryptanalysts used for these attacks. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you do, um, please give a thumbs up. And um, if you're not yet subscribed to our channel, I would be really happy if you subscribe to our channel. And see you in the next video.